Hello everybody and today I am back with uh, one more analyze of the candidates tournament and today I am going to analyze the game between Dean Liren and Richard Rapport. I will analyze this game because Perfect Panda recommended it and I also really enjoyed it. So let's get into it. Okay, so it was Grunfeld. As you can see, it is one of the main openings. Uh, after you play this move order, you can play bishop g7 and king's indian, or you can play d6 also transform to king's indian, but uh, d5 is the one of the main moves as well, as you can see from master 36,000 games played. So yeah, bishop g, uh, d5, uh, c takes d, takes e4, knight c3. As you can see, Magnus played it with white a lot of times. Look at this. Magnus, like 10 games of Magnus. And then if you see Magnus even played it with black. So it is very, very important opening and it's very, very popular opening. So bishop c4, as you can see after bishop g7, there is like three to four, even five lines. Queen a4, bishop b5. Bishop b3, knight f3, bishop c4, but bishop c4 is main, uh, then c5, knight e2, knight c6, as you can see, even now, a lot of Magnus games with both colors, uh, bishop e3, castle, castle, b6, rook c1, usually, at least uh, from the book, mostly d takes c was played, queen c7, and then black sacrifices a pawn, but then they play knight e5, knight b5, and then bishop d5, knight g4, they, white cannot take an exchange because it's mate, so it's g3, knight e3, f takes e, a6, and you take the an exchange, basically white is an exchange and a pawn up, but as you can see their pawn structure is super exposed, so black has compensations, and as you can see, here that after bishop a8 all games ended in a draw but okay in the game was rook c1 and then rapport played bishop b7 bishop b5 so the three main moves queen d2 bishop b5 and d5 the general played bishop b5 then rook c8 queen d2 uh as you can see there is 20 games played and 95% of these games is draw. So there was 20 games split and 19 ended in a draw. As you can see, computer also agrees that that's a draw. As you can see, top GMs played it. Um, so, in the game was CTXD. CTXD. Um, here it was the game played Anish versus uh, Din. Uh, but here Din was playing with black. And he got a pretty nice position and yeah he he won it because Sanish blundered a piece but in the game was queen d6 not e6 then rook of d1 here you see there is no games found but now there is a game found it was Anish versus Jan um, and then in this game it was rook fd8 so you can see it was also played in our game and then it was a3 and then if you can see evaluation bar basically um yeah it was a complete draw they like traded everything and then they repeated but here probably duda was waiting for a3 then queen e7 and like in the game between uh anish and yan they would probably do a quick draw but i'm not sure whether he blundered it he, he blundered bishop g5 and then he had to sacrifice an exchange but let's go a little bit back. So, uh, I think I can close the uh, opening book. Instead of rook fd8, bishop f6 would be better. Even though after I play bishop f6, it also says it's not good. So e5, bishop h4. Yeah, Grunfeld, like King's Indian, is super, super deep opening. There's a lot of lines, you see? It was in bishop a6, the best move, 0-0. Zero, zero. But it's open and it says bishop h6. And now it's plus 2 magically. So, very interesting, actually. Uh, if bishop e7... Huh, so maybe rook d8 wasn't actually a mistake. Okay, let's see, queen e7. Bishop g5. Bishop f6. 
and basically that should be fine mm, of course slightly slightly better for white but that should be fine for black as well um though if someone would ask whom i would like to place this position i of course would say this white because as you can see this strong is pawn, pawn is strong this pawn is also strong enough to capture and white is better but again in the game of stroke of d8 bishop g5 knight d4 takes takes this bishop b5 a4 then sort for like 30, 25 minutes and then uh richard played king g7 that was an inaccuracy he had to play for queen e7 uh, he had to play queen e7 and then king g7 and as you can see he's an exchange down right oh that's actually a cool move pretty fancy though it's not the best Oh, it's very deep. Rook d4 ish doesn't work because of queen c1. So rook c7, rook e7, takes, 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 queen e7. And then it would be equal after king g7, uh, after queen e7. Because you basically, black just somewhat hold a fortress which white cannot really break through. But R Richard played king g7, king f1, the only move. Which seems like unbelievable because much more logical move, at least what I would play, I don't know, it would take, but that's actually even slightly better for black. So, for example, queen h3, knight e2 takes, 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 queen e4, and black has a huge compensation. Queen a4, which should be said, is impossible because of queen t1, a g h0, d8, and the game would probably end like queen h8 in repetition. Or, yeah, something like that. Get a five. W works as well. So, but, king of one. And now knight e2 doesn't work because it's not a check. And then that was split in the game. And, okay, let's make it slower. Knight e2 blunder. Uh, Rupert had to play queen e7. After queen e3, he would be worse already. You know why king g7 was a mistake? Because there is h6 with tempo, and then king has to go back. But that's still totally better for Dane because, as you can see, pawn was on h5 and it was hanging. But now it's on h6, and the king on g8 is very bad for Rupert. Okay, but in the game was 92. Uh, queen e7 would be better, but still would be much more comfortable to play for Din. And here, queen e2 is a blunder. He had to go for queen d8. I guess uh, Richard played knight e2 because on everything else he would take as well. But here they probably have missed the line that after queen d8, queen e4, that the best line would be for Richard. And then, as you can see, uh, Din is basically h6 a nice move deflecting the bishop trading queens or queen f8 and that would be one as well but i think probably what they both miss it after knight c1 there is only move queen g5 which seems super weird from the first look but now as you can see h6 and then mate threat on the back rank is a threat and as well, the bishop hangs on e5 and the knight hangs. So, yeah, the best continuation would be like knight d3, otherwise it's like a forced mate or two pieces fell. But okay, h6, this, and as you can see, rook d3 here. And now king is again on the back rank and it's definitely not nice for Richard. Then queen b1, oops, I'll slip. Uh, queen here, here. Queen c5 doesn't work because of queen d3, counter queen sacrifice, but okay, king g3, queen e1, then king h3 here, and then as you can see, queen trade, and it is totally won because king is bad, rook d7 threat, and then would probably win it with ease. But the thing is, queen g5 is really hard to find, and then, yeah, there he would win because h6, queen e5 is checked. But it's extremely, extremely hard to find. Uh, because what I think he calculated that after queen h4, for example, there is h6 and it just doesn't work, it's even worse. And if rook c1 is worse immediately because there is queen e4, and now suddenly his skin, Dean's skin, is very weak. f3, queen e3, for example, here, queen f4, and now Richard would be the one who is trying to play on win. So, in the game was not queen d8 win move for the end, it was queen e2, 
takes takes a6 another mistake from Richard he had to go for bishop d4 and I think pretty much just take take play e5 and that's very hard to break through for Dane and that would probably end in a draw so a6 was played Dane took a pawn and here he had to go for queen e2 and takes takes here here g3 and then his rook can go to d7 with queen e6 threat and that's really important because in the game it was this almost the same but now rook d1 the pawn hangs on a4 and as you can see the variation the pawn queen is not on fourth rank and rook d7 works uh, pretty good. So if king g1, g takes h, that would be queen e3, and b6 pawn is a weakness. So probably very, it would be a very, very long game, but I'm pretty sure Dean would win it. Because after rook e1, queen d4, queen e2, bishop f6, it was going like the best line, like I calculate, yeah, I showed the variation, only rook on d1 would be a much better place, and the queen would not be on d4 there. A g was an accuracy. And you go for queen e4, and then it's very weird line, but still, somehow you could try to win it because um, he has pretty, pretty pawns pretty well placed. But as you can see, Richard pawns are really exploded, so he will probably play it for a while because after ag ag. That's already a draw. And queen e4 was played in the game. Queen d2, rook e2, queen d1, rook e1. And now Richard basically hold, holds a fortress. Queen c3, rook d1. Queen c6, don't take the bishop, otherwise you will lose. And probably why Dean didn't really calculate this over very deep, because as you can see, Richard had 18 minutes and Dean had 8 minutes. And queen g4, e5, and Dean decided to give a rook and then basically perpetual and draw so what can i say it is a draw but the game was super interesting one inaccuracy one mistake on london for dean and two inaccuracy one mistake on london for richard but just one mistake and one blunder and then from plus four and this is, as we saw completely one position to a draw but yeah thanks a lot for to perfect panda for the suggestion of the game and I really hope you enjoyed the analysis. Please write down uh, more games from this tournament you want me to cover and to analyze. And yeah, thanks all for watching and bye!